Hey, my name is Ashwin and welcome to Banter City. This is the year-end podcast and we're going to relive all the greatest moments of 2018 in WWE. And joining me is my friend and he's already been in this podcast multiple times. The man of the heart. My man, O.C. Hey, O.C. How you doing? Oh my God. That that's the best introduction every anybody has ever given past me to you and that was awesome. Thanks. Uh and I'm doing fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm pumped up and I'm really and glad too, to yeah. go for another round of this podcast. Okay. Yes. So well, let's begin. All right. Uh so just like we used to have slammies in WWE, we don't have it anymore, so We have decided to compile a list of awards that each of us are going to give to a superstar. So there's a list of titles and there'll be awards too. So we'll start with the superstar of the year. So OC, who are your picks? And then we'll we'll decide on one and then we'll give it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I I actually gave it a thought. You know, I thought about it, you know, for a while. You know, uh, we talked about having a podcast last last night, I think. And, you know, I thought about it. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I kind of didn't see any clear winner of this. Because, you know, first I was thinking about Seth Rollins. And, you know, Seth Rollins started there with, you know, he was on the top of the world. He was intercontinental champion and you know he was defending every week and you know but you know then shield came back and you know that you know that magic that he he has been creating every week on raw that yeah. gone away somewhere so you know for a while we didn't even knew that you know intercontinental championship became you know basically it became like a universal champion you know nobody was discussing about it but you know and so you know the performance was you know should not be the big because, you know, he was on the top for, you know, for half there. And then, you know, he she, the, his grab just fell down. So, you know, and then I thought AJ Styles, but, you know, AJ Styles has been on top, but, you know, his performances has, hasn't been so good like he was, you know, in 2016 or 17. So, and then I saw NXT where, and, you know, it didn't took me long, you know, it has to be the Master Shampa, you know, the man is like, you know, the best heel that I've ever seen, and you know, yeah. this clearly has been his year because mm-hmm. you know, there's you know, no arguments, you know, Tomaso, really, he just personifies yeah. it. He does, yeah, exactly. We haven't seen you know a heel like that in WWE, you know, we have never seen mm-hmm. you know, he is you know, the kind of magic that he creates online on Twitter, you know, his Twitter account is like really fun to follow and you know his tweets are you know he the guy you know he owns that character so i think it has to be the master champa and he is the champion right now and he's on the top of the world he's you know yeah. he's a treat to watch yes i agree with tomaso but my pick is going to be rollins because this year rollins has you know come out like yeah. anything because rollins was supposed to be uh the biggest draw as per uh, you know, as for Triple H, I believe, because he was the first NXT champion, and uh, all the years as he tried to be the babyface, it wasn't quite working, but this year, especially after yeah. Dean exited due to his injury, Rollins has totally cashed in, and that burn it down addition to his theme song has really set the flow for him. So, uh, I, Rollins, yeah. you're, you're giving it to Maso, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I'm with Tomato. I'm still with him. Yeah, you know, but Rollins Rollins has been carrying the carrying the Monday Night Raw, you know, yeah. this whole year. It's Monday Night Rollins. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that was the superstar of the year. Now, now that although we're saying Rollins and Tomato, there have been a lot of many su- other superstars who too have caused a stir in the way of things and have created a huge wave among the WWE Universe. We're talking about the break, the breakout superstar of the year that is the best comeback or the return superstar. So, who's your pick, OC? Or shall I go first? Yeah, you can go first. 
Okay, so this is a little tough. I would have gone to Lashley, but Lashley has been a little boring lately. So my pick for the break breakout superstar of the year, that is the best comeback, will go to... Um, drum roll. Drum rolls in the background. Who? Yes, drum roll, please. Uh, <laughs> tick, 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 tick. <laughs> this is hard. I mean, okay. There haven't been too many returns, if I'm not wrong. Okay, who else? Okay, I would give it to Drew McIntyre because he was already there in WWE, so I can't count him as a rookie. So, yes, Drew McIntyre is the perfect one to fit it because he has broken out like anything. Yeah, and, you know, my pick is the same. If, you know, Drew McIntyre has to be, you know, the comeback of there. You know, it's not just about the comeback, but, you know, what the superstar has done ever since he came back and Drew McIntyre has said nothing but impressed. Yeah, you know, he's, he carries he's such a good out. guy. Yes. And McIntyre gives out those vibes, those terror every time he steps in the ring in his opponent. Exactly. That's just... You know, at, at the moment, he's, he's one of the uh, one of the very few things, one of the very few good things that we have on Monday night right now. He's like, you know, he's the man of the Monday night at the moment, I think. Yeah, and, and uh, soon in 2019, I am pretty sure that the universal belt is going to hang around and wait. Yeah, he'll be, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I would love to see a match between him and Brock Lesnar. Like, that would be yeah. a real clash. I mean, it's kind of a dream match for me right now for the title. Okay, you see, but I think it would be better for Drew to face Braun Strowman because Drew and Braun have some unfinished business, I believe. He's the monster hunter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, I think, yeah, Braun is the first in line. Braun Strowman is the first in line into the title right now. Yes. So, and I think he should win, yes. He should win the title this time. I think it should be, I mean, it might happen at Royal Rumble or maybe at WrestleMania, but, you know, that is still, you know, Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar still gives me chills. Mm -hmm. Right. So, there's three guys, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, and Braun Strowman, the deserving candidates for the Universal title. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. So, uh, any news of Brock Lesnar? Will Brock Lesnar hang around here or is he going back to UFC? It's, uh, you know, you never know until, you know, uh, you know, we never know how he's going out or staying in, up in until his defense is over. Right. You know, at WrestleMania, people were like, he's going to walk out. And, you know, people were okay with it. But yeah. then again, he, he you know, uh, defends the title and he stays and then again at SummerSlam he loses and people were like you know he's gonna go this time and you know but he then again came back at Hell in a Cell so you know it's you know this time I'm not even gonna come in, come in because you know uh, the guy doesn't care about the product and you know I don't even know why he's still there so um, I, I mean, I, I I don't know. I really don't have any idea. But, you know, I'll be okay with him going out. Okay, and uh, Vince is mad at AJ Styles for not showing up for one night. My God. Yeah, that was really funny. But it is going to show a different side of AJ Styles, I believe, because the way he was fired up. I'm really excited about AJ Styles of 2019. And given that we saw superstars like Charlotte taking completely different personas, you know, after that match with uh, Ronda Rousey. So, I'm excited for AJ Styles, 2019. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there's one of the things that, you know, one of the positives that happened in 2018, you know, not only with Charlotte Flair, but with, you know, with Becky Lynch and with Dean Ambrose, you know, and with, uh, you know, Drew, and not Drew McIntyre, but, you know, all with Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guys were getting stale with that babyface character, so, you know, they did the right thing and, you know, they did it at the right time, you know, turned mm -hmm. all those guys heels, so, you know, that, that's one of the positives, you know, coming out of 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, moving on, we'll talk about the best segments or promo of the year. So, see, shall I give the drum roll? Uh, actually, uh, you should go first here too. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, now 
thinking back to the best promo of the year, I would go, I would stick with Daniel Bryan's anti-consumerist promos. I mean, those are so true. The best, you know, you can't really boo him because whatever he says is truth. And uh, it is for the good of the earth. And yet, he's someone who will mock you, who will totally try to tell you that all you, whatever you're doing is stupid. So that's the kind of heel, the self-righteous heel persona that he is portraying these days. I love that. And yeah. It's not just a single promo. It's a series of promos that are themed in a similar way. I just love them. And that, according to me, is the best promo or segment of the year. And the way we yeah, yeah. are truth, yes. Go on. Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, few promos, uh, you know, they have been, you know, some really good promos this year, but I think I'm going to go with the mm-hmm. uh, uh, cutting edge at SmackDown 1000. I mean, it, it wasn't very big of, big of a promo, but every time I go back and wa- watch it, it was, you know, with Becky Lynch as a guest, uh, it's really, oh, really yeah. good, you know. That uh-huh. was like, you know, he was making... Becky understands some things, and you know, yeah. you know, and then again, Becky snaps. You know, his she brings out those heel wipes, and you know, uh, it was really good to watch. And you know, I really love that promo. It was, you know, in SmackDown, you have two hours, and you have to keep things smaller. And then again, you know, it was, it was just really good to watch. You know, it ended so well. You know, it ended in in very less time. But you know, the notes that. You know, they ended it on. It was it was really awesome. Like you know, she Becky Lynch mocked at at a career injury, and it was like the darling of the fans. And you know, and then again, Becky got cheered. Mm. So that was that was one of the best promo that I have I you know I've seen in recent times. Mm-hmm. Right, it had so, an emotional yeah. touch to it. Yeah. Okay, mm, that was a really great promo, OC. Uh, Moving on, we'll talk about the female superstar of the year. So, who would it be, according to you? I know it's going to be one person. <laughs> it's it's clearly one person. Just say, just say her name. Just say her name. One, two, three. Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, of course. And she has been completely on fire this year. I mean, ever since her heel turn. Actually, since since July, I think since SummerSlam, and you know, she she is like the if you know when we see male superstars and female superstars as separate, you know, with you know male superstar of the year and female superstar of the year. But you know, if we even if we see uh, these two, you know, as a whole, mm-hmm. Becky will be the number one WWE superstar of 2018. You know, she just completely changed her game. You know, everything she does, she gets cheered. You know, she she's you know, Ronda Rousey is like the one of the most cheered WWE superstar of this time. And you know, even she can't you know get people to boo Becky Lynch. So that's her popularity, and you know, it has to be her. She she has been on fire. She has been like the number one superstar in 2018, not just a female superstar, but even if you're female. Yeah, and she's, even after Nia Jax broke her nose, she's used that accident so, uh, to such a good effect that her career has really stood out amongst the other. And uh, ever since Becky snapped on Charlotte and changed her persona, the SmackDown Women's title has gone to the main event. Of TLC and all of the SmackDown shows, so that's a big, massive improvement. Because yeah, and yeah, yeah, and it was it was so well deserved. You know, she has been screwed out of her opportunities since since 2017, I think. You know, she was champion in 2016 for a very brief period, and then again, you know, people were you know. Even before this heel turn, people always wanted her to be on the top. You know, people wanted her to be leading the women's division or SmackDown. And, you know, it was Charlotte all the time. But, you know, ever since she snapped and, you know, at SummerSlam turned heel and became champion one month after, you know, it was, I mean, it was well-deserved. And, you know, and she 
the kind of performances that she has been, you know, putting in. It's just, you know, yeah, definitely took her to the next level. Right. So, talking about performances, let's look at the match of the year. Okay, I'll see. Uh, now, this is a really tough one. So, you want to go first or shall I break it? Uh, okay, okay, I'm going to go first. And yeah, it's really a tough one because, you know, there are, there are so many good matches that comes into mind. You know, the main roster matches and then again, NXT matches. Yes. Uh, so, you know, but then, you know, I'm going to go for that uh, the Master Shempa and uh, Johnny Gargano at NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Uh, it was such a great match. I mean, the turnaround. I think, uh, wait, did I get the match right? It was a no disqualification match, right? Yes. Yeah, so that is the match because, you know, in the last two minutes of that match, the, you know, the kind of turn yeah. that the match took, it was, I it was everything. It was down. Yes. It was totally down. Yeah, you know, we were like, okay, now Gargano, Gargano is going to win. People were cheering because, you know, he was, was getting his ass kicked by by Gargano. But then again, he just came back. I think he, he attacked him with some brace or something and, you know, gave the finisher that DDT. I don't know yeah. his name, but it's really effective one. Yes. And the, the ring was exposed, you know, that... Uh, that yeah. wooden thing of the ring mm-hmm. was exposed, and that mm-hmm. DDT took. Uh, I mean, his head, you know, yeah. bow- not bounced, but you know, he hit that wooden thing with his head, and you know, it was one, two, three. And it was so believable, and the match was so awesome, and the especially the turn that it took in the end, it was, you know, yeah, because it it came, he was invited by Boost, but he, when he when he exited, everybody turned, everybody was cheering for him. I mean, the way he turned things around. Yeah, what's your match, by the way? What's your match, by the way? Yes. Okay. Uh, my match... Are you going... Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah, go on. Okay. <laughs> um, my match, uh, I would go with... Charlotte versus Becky lost women's standing match. They just tore the house down with that match. There was so much physical brutality. There was aggression. Everything was there. And Becky Lynch held the women's title, the SmackDown women's title, after two years in that match. So it was a special match. And the fans were really happy. The universe was... Or, um, they were totally behind her, and Charlotte was getting booed. Boo the woo was the hashtag that yeah. was trending. Yeah, even though even though she was a baby face then. Yes. Yeah, that, that that's how these days it's been. Like, once upon a time, heel used to be booed and face used to be yeah. cheered, but the dynamic has changed with internet coming in. Kayfabe is dead, and everything, anything is possible nowadays. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, you know, with all the digital media coming in, you know, now people cheer, cheer to, you know, who does great, you know, just like Richard said that, you know, if you're too good at being bad, they're going to cheer you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, just like the Boo Roman, because, yeah. you know, he's kind of over pushed and, you know, he doesn't even deserve all the things that he has been given. So they're going to boo him. They're going to cheer the guy that really deserves the guy that really entertains. So, you know, yeah. you know, just like Elias, Elias used to get cheered, yeah. you know, even though he was doing nothing, but still, yeah. you know, even that connection. Just speaking ill of the, whichever city he landed. And have you noticed this thing? Dean Ambrose also took the same route as Elias. I mean, the moment Elias turned face, Dean Ambrose started uh, dissing whichever city he landed on with himself. So it was so it did not work for Dean though. It yes, was, it did it did not. Clearly it did not. Yeah, it fell flat. Yeah. Mhm. So uh so yes, that was my match of the year and uh really although we picked these matches but again there were a lot of many other matches that stood out. Exactly. Uh so one of the matches 
which I would like to mention is the latter match for the North American title. It was, I think, consisted of five men, Velveteen Dream, Adam Cole, uh, EC3, Ricochet. Ricochet, Ricochet. Yes, EC3 and Ricochet debuted on the match and it was given five star by Dave Meltzer. So yes, that match too was one of my favorites and, and another match between Undisputed Era and Mustache Mountain at an NXT show. That match was good to watch too, especially yeah. uh, Twin Seven had a broken had had some knee issues. So the way Tyler bought uh, Tyler Bates fought out was really in, incredible to watch. Yeah, when he threw in the towel in the ring, that means yeah. that, you know, his uncontinued, yeah, that was, that was an incredible match. And even the main roster matches, you know, there have been some really good matches like Mayers and Rollins from Backlash and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the Dallas team. Player and Asuka, Oscar on the WrestleMania. It was really groundbreaking. That had so much stakes on the line. The streak of Asuka. Yeah, for for such a long time, it was my match of the year. And if we would, if we were seeing only the main roster thing, I would have said, you know, Charlotte Flair versus Asuka. That was that was an incredible match. There was so much emotion involved into it. You know, that's something with Charlotte Flair because she literally starts crying, and all the emotion comes in in her matches. You know, she really gets you involved in her matches. So you know, yeah. I, I I would give it to her. Yeah. It's really good. I agree. Um, okay, so. Match of the year, we spoke of singles competitors. Now let's move on to tag teams. So it's time for the tag team of the year. So let me go first because I'll tell you SmackDown has been the best place for tag team wrestling. There's uh, all the top teams the WWE, the New Day, the Usos, and the Bar are there. So I would pick the Usos because it was their year. Uh, the Usos main uh, had a good chance to win at WrestleMania. Usually they end up in pre-shows, but this year they got a chance and they really put a great match. And then every time Usos fight a tag team, the matches are always so exciting. I mean, there's high flying, there's super kicks. There's just they these guys know how to make it click. Yeah, I mean Usos are. I mean they these guys are really good and. It, it, Especially when they were heels, they were like, I mean, they yeah. were untouchable, to be honest. And, right. you know, the super yeah. kicks, the matches, I mean, and, and that game of matches are great. Yes. They even defeated Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, so that was the touching moment. Yeah, on SmackDown 1000, yeah. I mean, these guys are really incredible. And I would give it to Uso, you know, me too. I would like to give it to the Usos because these guys are really entertaining. They are no doubt the yeah. best in-ring tag team at the moment. You know, I think uh, uh, I think it was Dudley's back then. The, the Dudleys were the greatest tag team, you know, back in the day, and now it's the Usos. Yeah. So I think these two are the are the guys who really you know carried the tag team forward. And you know, these two are the you know if if you ask me about you know last twenty years, these two guys. <laughs> will be there. These two teams will be there. Yes. Usos really are. Uh, they're brothers and they really set it on fire. Yeah. Their chemistry is unique and, you know, they're just amazing. Right. Uh, okay, we've talked about a lot of things. Uh, let's talk about feud of the year. We've seen so many great feuds over this year and, uh, so which one is your pick? Which feud kept the crowd going? Which feud took w was trending the most? And which climax was the most chilling of all? Uh, I think I would give it to, again, to Johnny Gargano and Tomasa Shampa. Yeah. That feud was amazing. You know, the feud, you know, it's not only the matches, you know, the matches were great. There were like five star matches, you know, in that feud involved. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what happens in promos and everything, and, you know, you have to master Shempa. The guy is really uh, the greatest, you know, he's one of the best mic superstar with the greatest mic skills. And, 
<laughs> you know, he really gets you involved with whatever is going on. You know, you feel, you know, you just feel into it. And Johnny Gargano, he's, you know, he was a big baby face back then. Yes. And, uh, you and know, with her wife, you know, whatever happens there. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, wherever that feud, uh, they had matches, it's always the bad guy winning. And now, as we see NXT, it seems like we're going to have a heel DIY. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said to me when the feud was going on, and I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. And, you know, especially not, you know, in any near future, but, you know. Uh, it's, it's going to happen soon. I think it's going to happen soon. And, uh, you know, it will be so believable, you know, with all that condition for, for Johnny Gargano. It's going to happen and it'll be great to watch. Right. And, uh, of what's your, what's your of the year? And my of the year, I would go with Field versus Dogs of War. I'm <laughs> Wait, sorry. Actually, Ashwin, I can't really hear you. I think you're far away from the mic. Okay, one moment. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, uh, I would pick The Shield versus Dogs of War because that match, I, I know most people did not particularly find it interesting, but I really enjoyed it because the way things were turning, especially when Braun Strowman was trying to cash in on Roman Reigns, how Ambrose and uh, Seth Rollins assisted him and prevented him from cashing in and the way the story flowed and it moved on till, you know, Roman exited. So it was it was a great feud and with such big, big guys, all the, you know, all the top dogs in WWE battling it out. So it made Raw watchable for a good two-month period for me. Yeah, it was it was great, but you know what I, you know what why I did not like that feud was that it was the feud surrounded Roman. I mean, okay, I get it, he was the champion, but yes. the Shield was reunited was reunited so that he can get some cheers in the first place, and uh-huh. that made Seth Rollins. You know, he was Seth Rollins was on the top, but ever since the Shield was reunited, he was and it was. I mean, he wasn't on, he wasn't as good as he he was going, doing on his own and. Uh-huh. Uh, I think uh, I I didn't particularly like uh, uh, Braun Strowman's heel turn because he was you know he was one of the most over heels on Raw. He mm-hmm. just like he now is, but okay. you know the the matches they produced w- were really good. You know I think the one in Australia that was very really good, but I didn't really like the feud. Okay. Because yeah. it's just you know the Roman was the center of everything. That's why. Uh well. You can say that kind of, but nonetheless, it was. Uh, I enjoyed it because it was the yeah, physicality it was, it was of the like, matches. Yeah, it was, it was, and the it was way so it got triggered. Than what is, yeah, 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 go on, go on. Okay. Uh, now that we spoke of all the good moments in WWE, let's talk about the worst moments in WWE. The moments that made you question who booked it all. So let's talk about the worst booking decisions, the worst feuds of the year. Okay, you go first because I know what mine is. Okay. Uh, I'll have to scratch my beard for a moment. Yeah, I, I had to do it too. So that is why I, I you know, <laughs> okay. did some surfing. That was a clever tactic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thinking back, I would uh, go with... Uh, I would go with Jinder Mahal versus Roman Reigns. Because look uh, at both these guys, how disproportionate they are at the levels. Roman has been beating Brock Lesnar and all the big guys. And he, here they are giving him Jinder Mahal. who's And ever since Jinder Mahal had his feud with Roman Reigns, he's been on the decline. I mean, he went from the modern day Maharaja to just... Mm, repeating the same thing, Shanti, Shanti. So yeah, it really got windy. down Roman Reigns. And every time a feud brings down a wrestler, that is a bad feud, in my opinion. What yeah, about you? exactly. And that, that, uh, I mean, that is such, you, you put it like really great. Uh, yeah, that was like one of the worst things. And the match itself was like, yeah, uh, was like boring, to say the least. Right. Although Jinder has 
really improved his in-ring abilities over the years still that feud really brought him down and uh, also i think we've covered pretty much everything no wait actually i'm i'm going to tell mine now okay yeah please uh so there have been a lot of them like uh, Shawn Michaels coming back from retirement that was the worst decision because the storyline that he went out with was so perfect and you know the match itself was so boring and cringy and he wasn't really a sexy boy well, anymore uh, uh well to be honest oh see Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement i i agree that the matches were a bit dizzy because they were they are old men and they can't put five star quality matches which would uh, you know make us enjoy but nonetheless they were the box office attraction for those two shows so i think they achieved their purpose quite well yeah yeah and the other one that i'm going to i should say is brock lesnar winning the universal title again i mean you look at what was happening in the raw at that, like you know yeah that made it completely clear that they did not want to see any any part timer as the world champion and yes. especially not Brock Lesnar, somebody who doesn't care about the fraud product, and then you and you had Braun Strowman, the guy who was completely over, and people and someone who people really wanted to carry that title now, and you know it was his time. But what they did, they completely buried that. You know, they yeah. completely you know buried that guy. Right. Five, I think, and they gave back the title to someone that you know that will not even show up. So I think that has to be the worst. the season they made this year yes this time i agree because i was so happy to see the universal title finally back on raw but then again it disappeared so this time i would agree with you <laughs> oh finally at least we agree on no okay we agree on becky lynch too so there was a yes and one that we, there was one more i believe uh, there was i think uh, uso yes uso yes, uso that right. tag team But, I mean with universal title that you what's happening now that it's not even getting mentioned on Monday night raw and that is that is you know a bad thing you know yeah. you know you should mention that yeah yeah it's like the title is completely dead you know it's a new title like it it has only been uh six what uh, wait it has been two and yeah, a half a years a couple of years right a couple of years and you know it Brock Lesnar has carried it for like two years and you know the the title you know it needed the guys you know it needed to be defended regularly and it needed the guys to put on you know right. five star matches for that title because it was new and you know it it had to cement its legacy as the world title right. but what they did they you know they you know gave it to a part timer who doesn't even show up and they don't even mention the championship now and that is uh mm-hmm. the worst thing yeah you know, it, that is a very dangerous thing for attack. yeah especially in WWE if it's other promotions like NJPW it's okay because they defend the titles like once in two months or maybe a month yeah but, but for WWE it doesn't work yeah you're doing episodic shows you know every week in one pay-per-view at least in a month yes so mhm So, so that that has to be the worst decision by the WWE this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that we've talked so much, let's go for a 7 second dance break. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm doing here. Are you doing there? I'm doing here. Yeah, Actually, I'm, I'm doing I'm, I'm doing doing. my legs and hands. Okay. okay. I'm All at right. the moment I'm just I'm just really thankful to God that it's not a video call. Okay. That would be <laughs> okay i'm i'm not going to imagine what sort of situation you are in okay <laughs> let's okay that was good that was seriously the best thing after uh you know th- that was a good way of bringing our truth back to relevance and also carmela as a face though she's not selling it well i believe yeah but you know she's doing you know i like her more now than i like her when she was a champion yeah she's trying a lot though to be fair yeah uh-huh. i mean she's not uh, she's not of the same level as becky lynch or shot no she is no but, you know right yeah so she has to be in in these little skits and you know all this these 
character yeah. thing, you know, to stay relevant. And she's doing good, I think. Yes. And uh, also the weird after-match promo they cut uh, after the finals of the Mixed Match Challenge. That was really weird, right? Yeah, I was I was watching it. I was like, okay, man, what are they doing? You know, is this funny? Is this thing funny? And I was like, no, I don't think. You know, people were silent. Really, they, they got nowhere. They were supposed to get a paid expense trip to somewhere. <laughs> yes. And but they're at still least they, back at work. They, yeah, at least they got, you know, the number 30 entry number yeah. in the Royal Rumble. So, yeah. You know, there's that, at least. Yeah, um, I have a fingers crossed for our truth to eliminate the final <laughs> one and challenge yeah. the real right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just hope he doesn't bring the letter this time to the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. He did it once, I think, in 2016. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, okay, I've forgotten about that incident because every time I think of the Royal Rumble, uh, I think of Titus, Titus O'Neil falling inside, you know. Below. Yeah, man. That was, that was like... <laughs> uh, the, I I was dead laughing when I saw it. I was I was watching it on phone actually. I was watching it on Geo TV and, okay. you know, and I was like, man, what is this doing? And, you know, what... And how internet has, you know, trolled him for, you know, they still troll him for that. Yeah. And, you know, that, you know, any, even WWE made it a thing, you know, the next yes. year, uh, the next week, sorry, on Monday Night Raw, you know, he, he was tripping and tripping in front of Ben Corbin to just to piss him off. And, you know, they made it a thing. Yeah. And uh, he was interviewed by Gallus and Anderson uh, for an episode, for the first episode of Botch Club, which was which just came out two days ago. I even shared the link in the group. So uh, when asked about it, Titus was saying that he was looking for, he intentionally did it, and he was looking for Hornswoggle. Sorry, actually, yes. I, I didn't quite get you this time. Uh, so Titus said that he he did it intentionally, and he was looking yes, for yes, yes. that little bastard, Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Hornswoggle was there too in the Royal Rumble. But, uh, so, yeah, you know, even this year we had so many great moments, but, I, you know, there's, we had two of the worst pay-per-views ever this year, the yes. Backlash and Crown Jewel. Yeah, Those were just, I, I would agree for Crown Jewel, but... Backlash, I can't even think. I, I would go with Fastlane. Fastlane was a worse pay-per-view. Man, Fastlane had like this, you know, the six-man match, the Adetel, Sami Zayn, uh, Kevin oh, Owens, Ben yeah, yeah. and John Cena. That was, that was a really good match, to okay, be honest. Yeah, I, I take back. <laughs> okay, so, so we had two pay-per-views in Saudi Arabia. Greatest Royal Rumble was bearable, but Crown Jewel was shit because the World Cup match was an absolute joke. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just, I would not even, I was like, what What were they doing? I mean, they just took a guy, the guy who, who you know, who wasn't even a regular, you know, the regular mm-hmm. performer in the, in the uh, yeah, yeah, he, they took him and he just entered himself into the match and he went it. I mean, that was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was even happy that, you know, Miz and Ziggler was at the finals because, you know, those two guys were, you know, those two guys deserve a push. You know, they should have been. Yeah, that's you know, like a regular happy. match. Miz was yeah, Ziggler was, any regular day. Yeah, I was happy with, I would have been happy with either of them winning. But, you know, what happened was like just, you know, it was shit. But now and, they're using this World Cup to build something up between Miz and Shino Mac. So that's. Something, but still, it's a big price to pay with the title, best in the world, and yeah, making exactly. it as a joke. Yes. Yeah, I mean, even if you say that Shane McMahon is the best in the world, you would, you know, it would crack you up. Yes, definitely. And then again, we had, you know, that tag team, tag team match for, to close out DX versus Brothers of Destruction. And I know you, you've said about that yeah. match, what you said, I would keep that in mind. But then again, that match was man. You know. Yeah, it was boring, I would say, but the finish was good, and uh, it it really, you know, brought a lot of a decade, uh, like many decades of fandom came together to watch that match. So it was special in its own way, even though they put up a sloppy match. We can forgive that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, and 
And I think it would have been better because I think uh, uh, Triple H was injured midway into that match. So yes. I think that that was that a bad why. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay, OC, I think uh, we've talked a lot about this and it really has been a smooth sailing podcast because usually we sometimes watch, but I believe this time we have done it quite yeah, this well. Time I, I almost did it, you know, in a couple of, couple of different times, but I think I managed, I managed to come, come back. Yes. And yes, oh. that's what it's all about. We keep improving <laughs> every time we do it. And yeah, exactly. I'm really grateful for your invitation yesterday. And no, man, actually, I actually so much miss these, you know, I can't even tell because, you know, actually I was, I was, oh, when you, you know, yeah. stop doing them, you know, I was actually so much free because I just, my exams were just finished and I was like, okay, oh. man, you know, I was making my own videos, you know, I was making yeah. them, you know, I made two of them. Yes. But then and I, those I was, were much I, better, I would say, because you, you, you were narrating it so well and you were putting a lot of effort compared to me because I'm a kind of a lazy YouTuber who just records uh, and just puts it. <laughs> so that's, that's very good of you. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you, even though I was, you know, I was like, you know, I could have done so much more with them, you know, but I didn't have time. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is, you know, we, this thing, we can finish it up in like one hour. You can record it, you can upload it and, yes. you know, that takes time. So this is something I, I love more too. Oh, that's so happy. That makes me so happy because uh, I started this thing like I was too bored on January 1, no friends, nowhere to go out. So I thought, okay, let me make something up. So I was inspired by listening after, you know, people like Cole Cabana who have their own podcast and also our group. Without our group, nothing would have been possible. So you guys are the sole yeah, inspiration that for me. Yeah, that, yeah, thank you. That, that's the story of you, man. That's really, thank you. Yeah. It's really fun, you know, it's really fun. And that, you know, me say, me asking you for, you know, doing them is, you know, I think it's enough for, for me to tell you that how much I like being here. Yeah, so you were all brought together by wrestling. So, yes, that's that's a good thing. Uh, so, OC, we're at that time of the year and... Uh, Wish you a happy new year, buddy. I hope you yeah, you too, man. Do you too, man. Keep that fire, which you do things, which you study and progress in your Thanks, life. Man. So Thanks, man. You too. Going. Thank you, buddy. Maybe you all, maybe you all have a yeah. happier than the yes. you know best year we ever had. Yes, and hopefully we innovate something in this podcast because audio, this audio is really great, but. To draw more people, we definitely need to do something better because that's how wrestling works, right? We do something better every time Mm -hmm. and we innovate. So, all right. Thanks for your time, buddy. Really appreciate that. And And happy 2019. And thank you all for listening. Hope you have a wonderful new year and have a blast. Bye-bye.